I'm I'm Peter Irvin. I'm uh, I, I retired from fighting last year after about uh, a ten year career. Um, I'm a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, I was British champion a few times in uh, in various formats of Thai boxing. Um, I had a few um, British and European titles in in mixed martial arts. I uh, fought some some good guys from around Europe. I think maybe I'm, I'm maybe a little bit better known in in Germany and Belgium and, and around the European scene than, than maybe I'm at home. Um, yeah. I pretty much um, I competed in, in in more or less every uh, every format, not necessarily to a high level, um, but I competed in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in the Gi and with no Gi, competed in Judo, uh, competed in. Um, in, in boxing, not to a high level, but I, I tried, I tried to participate competitively in, in every format that I studied. Um, yeah, so I, I retired last year. I didn't, I didn't really want to. Um, I wasn't quite ready to go, but it, it started becoming apparent that there, there wasn't really any any further to go. You know, I'd accomplished most of the things that I wanted. Um, I never got to fight in the UFC, which is a, a bit of a disappointment. But I've got to suspect that had I actually got there, I would have found it was much the same as what I've been doing before, and, and, and probably wouldn't have been, um, you know, glamour, fame, and fortune. In fact, that it's almost certainly not. Um, so I'd, I'd sort of intend to just to just walk away from uh, a meal together. Um, but I've got a group of guys around me who are. Um, both incredibly promising and who I care about a lot and uh, I'm, I made some mistakes in my career and I'm, I'm, fairly, I'm very determined that, that, that they won't do the same thing um, so I'm, I'm hoping that by, by staying present that, that we can, can bring them the success that, that they deserve. Um, Yeah, I was it was great. It was it was, edu uh, it was educational for me. Um, the the squad scene in in England is is pretty much tied out. Legislation's changed a lot, and it uh, it doesn't it doesn't really work the same anymore. You know, and we've got you know, we've got similar social problems, but the, the it's um, it's it's still it's it's quite different. You know, so it was nice to it was nice to get the groups with with what people are doing here. I was, I was really impressed by the, um, the amount of involvement, you know, that it's very, very easy to define yourself by what you're, what you're against, you know, the, to be a, an anti-fascist, to be an anti-capitalist, you know, but to define yourself in terms of what you're, what you're for, it's a, it's a little bit more difficult and, you know, it's pretty easy to sit around the pub saying ah, that's wrong that's wrong i don't like this i don't like that somebody should go and do this you know but the people here are very 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 focused and very very movie and have very very clear ideas about what it is that they're for it's not just simply like combat demonstrations and things like that and in england i you know not not across the board but a lot of a lot of anti-fascist movements are, are simply putting up counter demonstrations to to right-wing movements you know, it, which which is good, it's good, but the 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 reach of the uh, the, the the scope of the, the the social projects here is a little bit broader, and there's a little bit more a little bit more certainty about what they're actually trying to accomplish rather than what they're simply trying to prevent. That was that was quite a that, that was an eye opener. That was good. So when you took. It's 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 notable here yeah, that, that there's a big presence in, in Poznan and uh, from the anti-fascist movement, and there's a, and there's a, a lesser presence from from the right wing here in this particular city. And I can only assume that the the, the popularity of, of the right wing is being diminished by the by the presence of the left wing. It's, um, like seminars are seminars are always. Funny things because you get a, a broad scope of people with different different ability levels and uh, different uh, different objectives with their training. So it's, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to pitch something that's gonna that's gonna be useful for everybody. So I try to do things that are a little bit more basic, a little bit uh, a little bit more fundamental, 
and then try to just add a few details that people can take if they're a little bit more advanced or at least still make sense to the guys who are um, doing the training recreation here, they're just at the, at the start of the, the training career. Um, but it was, it, was a, it was a real pleasure to see um, you know, people coming from, you know, people come from different countries and coming from all around Poland the night because of, because of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, because of Muay Thai. You know, it's, that, that, gives me, that gives me a lot of pleasure, a lot of pleasure to see, uh, to see it unite with people like that. It was good. This, the same thing happened in England that, that happened in Poland with the, the explosion of MMA. Um, and largely what it, what it hinges on is you know, the people What people do really like to see is, is people stand up and train. You, know, you see it, it's, it's pervaded the, the way that uh, MMA fights are officiated. You know, there's a lot more interference by, by referees to, to bring guys back up to the feet. The time limits have been, have been minimized for, uh, for entertainment value. You know, it's very different from the, from the old school body tools. Which although this, this, it sounds exciting, when you go back and watch them, there's, they, they, can, they can be quite boring. You know, things like, you know, like things like headbutts. It sounds really extreme to, to have a fight where headbutts are allowed. But when you see a lot of those old fights, you've got one guy, makes one takedown, sits in the guard, and just nudges away with short shots while the other guy hangs on. And because there's less referee interference and there's, there's uh, 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 less, uh, uh, less reaches on the, on the time, they're just going like that for ages, and it's, it's not very entertaining. So the, the addition of rules to make it a, a, an entertainment sport is, is affected somewhat the you know the, the original the original concept of the of the sport. You know, but really, what's done it is is marketing. You know the, the the image and the appeal of you know of the cage and the you know the idea of no rules even though there are many. You know, is it sounds more appealing than it actually is. When I fought on um, uh, uh, Cage Ridge in London, they had a format that they called UK1, which was K1 rules with the MMA gloves in the cage alongside MMA fights. And I, I got to suspect that a lot of the audience didn't even know that it was a different format taking place. It wasn't really explicitly explained. And actually, a lot of the time, those fights on the, the well, on those rules turned out to be the most popular and the most crowd pleasing ones. You know, and why? It's the same stuff, but it, it, it had the it had the image value, the, the four ounce gloves. Which you know, you, a lot of guys fighting fighting Muay Thai wearing a six ounce glove, but it's taped up like a boxing glove. It didn't make a great deal of difference to, to what you're actually dealing with. You know, and the, the the octagon is supposed to the cage. But we've got like a take the, the the kickboxing format that I was talking about there, like the, the UK one that Cage Rich does. My teacher Kieran Kelly introduced the same thing, he used to call it X1. Um, uh, John Lane Paul has been quite successful in Australia with uh, his cage kickboxing format. I think it, it offends traditional Thai boxing aficionados a little bit to abandon the uh, to abandon the roots of it. You know, there's a but I, it was a, it was a failing of the introduction into the West of Thai boxing that people brought in lock, stock and barrel with all the foibles of Thai boxing and the, and the dressing up, where like the music for example, which is it's a very culturally significant thing, but it doesn't have the same it doesn't have the same meal for us. You know, the guys come out with the with the flowers and the monk call and do a Y crew. You know, it's you know I'm, I'm not a Buddhist, you know, and you know I like, as much as I appreciate the idea of showing respect to the teacher beforehand. People don't want to stand there for five minutes before a fight gets going. They like the MMA fights where one guy wins, boom, quick, out, next one in, another fight. You know, it's a, it's a more spectator friendly format. And, and Thai boxing like that, it's never ever going to work for TV. And if it never works for TV, you're never going to get any money. You know, this is, you know, this is why K1 took off in Japan, because they trimmed it down to the, the short, fast three minute rounds, a little bit of advertising, and next fight straight in. You know, the, we were talking about this a little bit at the seminar today. The, the, the curiosity of the, the five round fight with the first two rounds is largely, the first two rounds stricken from the scorecards is largely to allow people to put bets on the fights. So you don't want to get the guys knocking each other out and stopping the fight in the first two because not all the money's come in. But when you've exported the format of Muay Thai without, without the, the live betting, 
it doesn't make any sense to have this, to have the same thing. But because people fall in love with with Thai boxing and then fall in love with Thailand and Thai culture and all those things, they want to adopt the music, the style, you know, and these curiosities of the sport, like the white crew and the and the, the first two rounds being stricken from the scorecard. Most people fall suit a lot with the um, you know the Thai scoring system, like the like the body kick being being so highly valued and the punch is not, you know, where the Dutch format it just they said, no, well, we'll just do it our way and we'll score everything equally and pay more attention to hands. You know, I, I don't know exactly where I stand on that. You know, I, I wouldn't want to say to abandon the, the I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want people to abandon the, the history and, you know, and the respect for the art of Muay Thai. But if you want to make some money from being a Muay Thai fighter or any kind of fighter, essentially you have to accept that what you are as an entertainer, not an artist. You know, you can practice martial arts as an artist, and then you have to expect to live like an artist, which, you know, you know it mostly involves family. You know, when, you, when you've got something like, like Jiu-Jitsu, like Muay Thai, successful athletes have this, what they call, like a, an internal locus of control, where the, the more successful athletes believe that they're, that they're in charge of their fate, you know, it's um, it because you because you get you get a demonstration of 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 the results. You know, I do this, I do this, I do this, and I get stronger and I get faster and I start to win. You know, and it doesn't have to be fighting sports; it can be it can be any physical activity. But then you get the evidence of the fact that you you're you're in charge of your fate. You feel empowered. You know, when you when you're capable of these things, you don't need to attach yourself to other people to make you feel strong. You know, that, that's the thing. That's why specifically I like fighting sports. You know, because as an individual, you you are absolutely responsible for yourself. But equally, you you um, the rewards that you reap come from work that you did. You know, and of course you have support from the people around you. But you don't you don't need then when you when you're when you're a strong person within yourself. You don't need to attach yourself to other people to make you feel powerful. You don't need to you don't need to to join groups that make you feel like a tough guy. So there's, there's, I mean, there's two types of people who are attracted to fighting sports as well. You know, you, you got people. You know, take take jujitsu for example. The whole goal of jujitsu is to is to physically dominate the other person. It depends on what attitude you approach it from. Either you're somebody who likes to dominate other people, or you're somebody who absolutely refuses to be dominated. You know, everybody else, people who who are in the middle ground. They, they might try jiu-jitsu, they might try Muay Thai, they might try boxing, you know, but they, but they, they cease to enjoy it because it's, it's too hard. The guys, who, the guys who simply like to dominate other people, you know, they become the, like the bully fighters, the ones that, the ones that crack under pressure. You know, the people who refuse to be dominated and use it, use it as a physical tool to prevent themselves from being dominated in a one-on-one -on -one sporting situation. You know, it, it increases your it increases your, your feeling of value, it increases your you know, there's a there's an amount of self esteem that 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 allows you to, to feel that you, you can't be you can't be mentally dominated by other people. You know, the the, the two go hand in hand. You know, so me personally I I only really wanted to train jujitsu, you know, not because it gives me a great thrill to choke somebody out, but because I love to know that in spite of whatever person's best efforts, that I could resist them. And if they get me one time, then I'll come back again and I'll keep trying, and I'll keep trying until until I can hang with them. And this, the same with all the all the fighting sports. You know, but it, it, it crosses over. When you, and when you do something courageous like like stepping into a ring, it it takes courage, but it's it's relatively safe. You know, but you build up you, you build up a, a belief in yourself, and you. you you, you get this, you get this courage that, that crosses over. And when you have physical courage, then it's, it becomes easier to have moral courage. I think that's, I think that's essentially the value of it. The value of it. Um, so in the morning, uh, I get up and uh, and head over to uh, head over to Sunderland, Sydney, nearby Newcastle, and uh, the professional guys will be there. The best guys from all around the northeast. All get together, help each other train. I'll, I'll do those training sessions, and then I'll go off back to Newcastle, 
and teach him how, and teach him how Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, or well, AI Power Jiu Jitsu after um, you know the tradition of like like Chakuriki and Jiu, what they call the the karate, this, this great touch gym, so they, they called the they, they called after the, the neighborhoods in Japan where the karate came from. Yeah, Baba was where my teacher Perez was as his academy in Metropolis in Rio de Janeiro. So that was that was the, the significance of that. So I teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu there. And the rest of the time I teach I teach uh, private lessons in in, in, in wrestling and jiu jitsu and in uh, in uh, K1 and Muay Thai. Um, that's that's pretty much it every every day every day, and then I get um, take Sunday off and spend the day with my with my little girl. This is the the best thing in the world. I want to thank you guys for for having me here. It's it's been it's been a big experience. It's been a it's been a real honor to be invited to come forward and share the, the things that I've learned with them. Um, uh, with the people here, and so um, you know, all all you have left after the you know when, you, when you're not fighting anymore, there's no there's no practical value for me to have the skills that I've got. The only the only value that it's got left is is what other people other people can benefit from it. You know, so being invited to come pass it on, it's a it's a big pleasure, and it makes you feel like it makes me feel like I didn't waste my life. You know. The same other people that I want to thank is the Mustangs, um, the, the, the people there who place value on the on the, the knowledge that I've got left over from the from the competitive years of my life. You know, it keeps my it keeps my dreams alive and keeps me motivated to, to continue getting better. You know, well, I might find somebody again. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. I shouldn't.